Now let us move to the next important topic that is granulation. Now, as I told you, the tablets, in order to manufacture the tablets, the powders, they are converted into granules and the granules, they are further converted into a tablet. Now, why is it, is it important in order for you to prepare the granules? Yes, it is very important. Okay. Now, now why should, why should I prepare the granules? Okay. Granules increases the flowability of the uh, particles. If you have powders, the powders are not going to flow very smoothly from the copper to the diamond. Okay. Uh, take the example of powdered sugar, piti sakar, which you call it in Marathi. So take the example of powdered sugar and take the example of granular sugar, which are going to which are going to flow faster. Common sense, the uh, the uh, the granular sugar is going to flow faster, isn't it? The powdered sugar is going to stick around the hopper, isn't it? In a similar manner, the granules they increase the flowability. Secondly, granules also increase the compressibility, compaction of the tablets. Okay, there are other advantages also. Uh, well, there are other needs also why we prepare the tablet, which we are going to see in uh, say our eight to nine slide that we are going to see. But define uh, uh, how will you define uh, granulation? Granulation is nothing but conversion of small particles, powder particles, into a larger particle, which is uh, which is known as a granule or larger agglomerate. So it is nothing but the conversion of smaller particle into a more physically stronger, imparting it a mechanical state and a larger agglomerate. This agglomerate is nothing but a granule. These are known as granules. Okay. Now, uh, in short, granulation is the process by in which it creates the bond between the particles. So you have one particle over here. So this is one particle, this is another particle, this is another particle, and this is one another particle. So what it does it? So this is one. So it is creating a bond with this. It is creating a bond with this particle, and it is creating a bond with this particle. And these when when the bond is being created, it forms this granule. Okay, a granule is being formed when the particles they bind to each other, right? So it is nothing but conversion of these smaller, smaller particles into a larger particle, which is stronger, which is more fluid, right? In short, it is nothing but the process of creating bond between the particles. Now, how the bonds are formed? Bonds can be formed by two ways. It can be formed by the method of compression, or it can be formed with the help of binding agent, the binders that we, are going, that we have added in our formulation. So by adding the binding agent, because of that binding agent, a bond has been formed. Or just because of compression, as we are going to see in dry granulation technique, the bond is formed just because of the compression. So there are two methods of formation of bond, that is compression and binding. So this is uh, this is something about the definition and how the binding uh, of the particles they take place. Let us move to the ideal characteristics that are required from a granule. We want how the granule should be. The granule should be spherical in shape. Right? So this is the granule. So this granule, if you see, it is somewhat spherical in shape, but it is not exactly spherical in shape. So the granules usually have, as I told you earlier, so it has a little bit this kind of a shape, starry kind of a shape. Okay. What you expect from a granule that it should have this kind of a shape, a very round kind of a shape, spherical shape. What does this spherical shape is going to help you? This spherical shape helps in more flowability of the better flowability of the powders, okay, of the granules. It should have smaller particle size distribution. What do you mean by smaller particle size distribution? When you are doing seed analysis, that most of the granules should be retained on one kind of a seed. So retained on 40C, on 40 mesh size C, suppose you are having, okay, then here 
here in this 40 mesh maximum say 80 to 90 percent of the granules are retained on this seed when it happens in that way that time we are going to say that it is having a smaller particle size distribution that is the particles are not of, not of different different shape they are of uniform shape and that is spherical and of uniform size so the particles should be in short the particles should be uniform shape and of uniform size that is the characteristic that we expect from a granule it should have adequate quantity of moisture it should not have moisture which is going to be very high okay which is going to cause sticking and picking inside the dye cavity at the same time it should have a little bit quantity of moisture which is going to help in binding of these granules in order to form a tap it should have a very good flow property if they are spherical in shape if they are uniform in shape then it have good flow property it's going to have good compressibility also okay we are going to talk about compressibility further also how the compressibility is increased in because of granulation and it should have sufficient hardness also so this granule should have particular peculiar mechanical uh, physical strength also so they should be strong enough so that they do not break while you are transferring from one place to another place it should not break when you are putting the granules inside the hopper inside the hopper they should not break right so they should have sufficient hardness also so these are the ideal properties that are required from a granule that should have uh, uh, uniform shape uniform size uh, 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 adequate quantity of moisture low but adequate quantity of moisture it should have blue, good flow property, it should have good compressibility and it should be sufficient hard. <coughs> now, there are, two <coughs> there are two types of granulation. As, uh, as I, I told you in the previous slide, there are two types of granulation. You have wet granulation and you have dry granulation. Okay. Now, wet granulation is a method which has been widely used, right? We talked about wet granulation in our practicals also. What we did was, the steps that were involved was, we took the drugs, we took the excipients, the excipients that we talked about, the disintegrant, the binder, the, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, diluent. So, you took the uh, diluent, binder, and the uh, disintegrant, you mix the along with the drug you mix them together then you prepare a binder solution but uh, when you took the binder you have taken the binder solution you have prepared the binder solution these binder solution you have added to the powder mix in order to form the wet mass this wet mass you screen it through a suitable sieve right the you collect the moist granules you dry these granules from again from a suitable sieve and then you uh, uh, sorry, uh, you dry them and after drying them, you again pass them to another seed. Okay, and these granules are the final granules that you are going to add. And to these granules, you are further going to add the disintegrant, the glidant, and lubricant. And then you are going to go for compression. So, you are going to add disintegrant in the earlier phase also, and you are going to add disintegrant uh, in the later phase also. Okay. So this is how the wet granules work. Now let us talk about the difference between the wet granules and dry granules. Okay, in wet granulation technique, you have used solvent, right? Either it was water or it was a, a, a non aqueous solvent, maybe alcohol, okay, that you have used. And to this solvent, you have added binding agent. And this binding agent, this solution, you have added to the powders. And you have mixed it to form a dough. In dry granulation, you do not add any liquid. You do not add water. You do not add any solvent. And you do not prepare uh, uh, what you call that a wet mass out of it. Right? Then what you do in dry granulation? Okay. In in dry granulation, I'm sorry. In dry granulation, what you do is you mix the powders together. So the first step is going to remain the same. You mix the powders together. After mixing the powders, what you are going to do is you are going to compress that powder with the help of the force. 
and because that is the use of rollers we use rollers in order to compact these powders and you, when you compact these powders using roller using the compaction forces the particle they get binded to each other you must have done it uh, uh, when you were small you used to take uh, uh, a burf lete ho have you, you have used burf and then you press it right you have particles of burf and you press it the ice you press it what you get is you get a you get a granule out of it isn't it in the similar manner what you are going to do over here is you are going to press the powders and you are going to get something that is known as slugs and these slugs okay you are going to further break down slugs are nothing but larger particles okay so the larger tablet bigger tablets okay so you get bigger tablets and these bigger tablets are further broken down with the help of the machine in order to get small small particles so over here you use in granulation process you use granulating fluid over here you don't use granulating fluid in we are going to say again we are going to see dry granulation detail but so just to give you the difference between dry granulation and wet granulation i have prepared this slide now this uh, this fluid okay and the binding agent that you have added it helps in binding of particles here the compaction or the compression that you are using the compressive forces that you are going to that you are using that helps the binding of particle now when do you use wet granulation okay wet granulation is been used uh, uh, when the material are not sensitive to heat and water okay but uh, when the material is sensitive to heat and water okay what you are going to do is dry granulation so if there is some material which is sensitive for heat and water okay then this method is not going to be suitable because we are drying the granules at 50 degrees c so heat liable substances may get decompose okay and we are adding water we are adding solvent okay so when the material is heat and water sensitive moisture sensitive then this method of wet granulation cannot be used whereas if the material is heat and water sensitive moisture sensitive then dry granulation process can be used okay i talked talked about the process the process is been there i have talked about wet granulation process in my earlier slide that you mix the uh, powders together you add granulating fluid containing binder you form a dough you pass it to the sieve and then you get the granules over here you take the powders together you mix them together and you compress them together okay and then you break it down together and then you break it down okay that is how the dry granules are formed the equipment that is used is rapid granulator fpg that is fluidized bed granulator these are the equipment that i use the equipment that is used over here is chill sorting these equipments we are going to study in our tutorial okay in tutorial i am going to show you the videos of this equipment okay and i am also going to explain you the working of this equipment okay so these are the different different equipments that we are going to study uh, Let, let, let me go a little bit further. So this is the one of the equipment that is pantry mixer. We are going to see the video. So this is the video of pantry mixer, right? Just in order to show you what I am going to show you tomorrow. So this is the video of pantry mixer. Then we are going to start study about tray drying method. We are going to uh, study about uh, uh, oscillating granulator. Then we are going to see the video of oscillating granulator. we are going to study about diosna mixer granulator then we are going to study about this is a video of tray dryer then we are going to study about uh, the uh, diosna mixer okay then we are going to see the video of diosna mixer this is the video of diosna mixer in the similar manner grail mixer granulator we are going to study it for first and then we are going to study the see the video of it okay similar the fluid granulator and then we are going to see the video of fluid granulator fluid as bed granulator and we are going to see the video of fluid as uh, uh, this granulator uh, fpg okay and then we are going to study about 
dry granulation and we are also going to in detail we are going to see the advantages disadvantages reasons for granulations we are going to study and then we are going to study the uh, uh, what call that the equipment that is used in uh, dry granulation and then we are going to study the see the video of dry granulation okay so so this is uh, this is how our um, tomorrow's lecture is going to <coughs> go about <it. clears throat> before we move on to uh, this is just i wanted to show you how we are going to conduct our tutorial for tomorrow your tomorrow's tutorial is going to be based upon the videos that we are going to see okay and uh, just let me tell you that this is not uh, included in your part of syllabus therefore as as an extra uh, information because this these equipments are very very important you are going to handle this equipment and these are very important from your gpat point of view also okay that's why this i am going to take as an extra lecture okay for you before we move on to uh, that aspect let me uh, talk something about the limitations of uh, bed granulation okay your limitations of bed granulations are become, going to become the advantages of your dry granulation okay and your limitations of dry granulations are going to become uh, advantages of your bed granulation <coughs> So, what are the uh, limitations of bed granulation? First of all, about the moisture sensitive and thermolabile drugs. These drugs cannot be prepared. If a drug is moisture sensitive or thermolabile, <coughs> then you cannot proceed with the bed granulation. Now, uh, the next is there is a lot of loss of material that happens in bed granulation because there are a number of steps that are carried out in your bed granulation technique. Therefore, there is a loss of material in the bed granulation technique. It is also an expensive process because there are lots of steps. Therefore, there is lots of labor that is required. It is a very time consuming step because you are going to prepare the dove. You are going to dye the dove. So, preparation of your dove is going to take the time. Drying, uh, converting into granules is going to take the time. And then drying of it is going to take the time. It is not only going to take the time. But lots of equipments are going to be required and lots of energy in the form of heat is going to be required. So, at this time, uh, so these equipments are also going to take a lot of space. So, it is an expensive process because a lot of labor, a lot of time, a lot of equipment, energy and space is required in order to form and in order to prepare wet granulation. Though I am saying that wet granulation is having some disadvantage, but still, wet granulation is the most preferred technique. If the drug is not moisture sensitive and thermolabile, then wet granulation is the most preferred technique today in industry. Because the tablets that are formed, because in further tableting technique, wet granulation play a very, very important role. They facilitate the process of production of tablet. Hence, it is the most preferred technique. Now, another limitation that wet granulation is uh, having is that it aggravates the component incompatibility. Suppose there is one excipient that is incompatible with the drug. Okay. Now, this incompatibility is going to increase in the presence of water. So, you are using water or you are using solvent. So, these water or solvent, they are going to increase the incompatibility between the excipient and drug if it exists. In normal dry granulation, maybe the particles they are coming in contact with each other, the drug particle and the excipient particle they are coming in contact with each other, but they are not showing any, uh, uh, what you call that, very incompatibility. But in the presence of water, they may show incompatibility. Okay. And lastly, it is a multiple processing step as i told you earlier number of steps are involved over here so it is laborious and it is time consuming also but as it is a multiple processing step hence it is difficult okay to add complexity of validation and control difficulty so you cannot validate and control these steps what is what is a validated process a validated process is a process whereby okay that process is going to give you same results time and again. So, if I prepare a procedure, I keep 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and my this procedure 
is always using this procedure is always going to give me the same result then i can say that my process is validated okay but in case of you know a uh, uh, wet granulation there are chances that after following the step every time the mass that you get maybe the result that you get the the dough that you get may be different okay because there are number of steps that are required there are number of steps that are involved when the number of steps are required in preparing something okay definitely it adds more of complexity and even if one step is you know uh, there is a problem in any one of the step then the results are going to fail okay so these are some of the limitations of wet granulation as i have said earlier there are there may be many limitations of wet granulation but finally okay wet granulation is the most preferred technique okay now uh, let us come to uh, dry granulation we have some one or two minutes so i'll just uh, cover a little bit of dry granulation which i told you earlier okay these equipments we will see tomorrow as i told you okay let me see, uh, let me uh, go through this slides uh, slide of dry granulation which i have already covered with you so i have explained with you now dry granulation is a process in which the powder mix is compressed so the you take the powder you mix them together and it is compressed and no heat or no solvent maybe water or any other solvent is not been given as i told you it is not used very widely only if the drug if it is heat and water soluble or solvent liable then only this method is been used okay the procedure as i told you earlier first it is milling drugs you break down the drugs and excipients in smaller sizes you mix them together after mixing them together you compact them okay okay material by compression and after compacting them you get bigger slice tablets okay which are known as slugs they are known as slugs bigger type tablet and the process is known as slugging so you get a big size tablet out of it you have another bigger bigger machines in order to prepare big size tablets or you get something known as a briquette okay they are known as briquettes so you get something known as briquettes or you get something known as slugs and this briquettes uh, briquettes are marathi sangaycha zala to it is nothing but dekhla apan je mhanto okay in that form it is so it is bigger slice uh, it's bigger in size and they are then further broken down using particular machine in order to get different different granules so you have different different granules after breaking them down so method for dry granulation once again they are more widely used method is known as slugging Where you form the bigger size tablet, uh, where the powders are pre-compressed and result resulting tablet or slugs are milled to yield the granules. So you prepare a slug, you prepare a briquette, and they are milled in order to get the granules. The other method that is used for pre-compression is by use of pressure rolls. Okay, the machine is known as chillsonator. Over here, what you get is the briquette. So you use a tableting machine. A bigger tab, uh, tableting machine in order to get a slug, or you use a chill tone chill sonator, or you use a roller compactor in order to get a briquette. Okay, so uh, this is how that I have depicted. I'm mean, sorry, this is depicted by the diagram. Okay, so you have the one method as using roller compactor. Okay, where the powder is squeezed between two rollers to produce a sheet of material. So this is the sheet of material that I was talking about. Which is being prepared, or you can prepare a larger size tablet. A large tablet is produced with the help of heavy duty tablet press. So use heavy duty tablet press, and use a larger size of tablet to be prepared. And this larger size of tablet is further broken down into powder, uh, into granules, which is used for now tableting. Okay. So two methods of preparing granules: one by wet granulation, and second is by dry granulation technique. Uh, as i told you the uh, disadvantages of uh, wet granulations are the advantages of dry granulation so what were the limitations over there are advantages over here less equipment and space is required it eliminates the need of binder solution heavy equipment cost and time okay because the drying step is been avoided it can be used for moisture sensitive material that is drugs it can be used for heat sensitive drugs and it improves the disintegration as the particles are not binded together by a 
point. Okay, so these are some of the advantages of diagrammation. Tomorrow, uh, disadvantages are going to be uh, uh, opposite to it. That is, uh, it is having a, uh, you require a heavy duty tablet press to form a slug. So that's the equipment that is required. Uh, uh, if uh, color distribution, if you are adding color, then no color, uniform color distribution takes place. Okay, because uh, when you are adding color, what you do it usually is you add the color to the binder solution and then you add it to the powders. Okay, so there is a uniform uh, mixture of color, but when you are using diagonalization, that is not possible and it tends to produce a lot more dust. Okay, than the wet granulation when you are compressing the tablet okay and it may be it may lead to contamination production it may lead to production of toxic dust okay so these are some of the disadvantages of your dry